Professor Ziggy Katz here, second sesh. It's noon up in here. Uh, validation word, particles. Okay, validation word received. Altoona. Particles, Altoona. You lift? I'm really me, okay? Happy? So where were we? How you doing, bot? All good on your end? Sitting here all week listening to a bunch of bad kids reveal their innermost demons? That must be kind of fun. You probably know all the tricky shit that people do. Weird. You're like one of those old Catholic priests. Anyway, what to say? I had a lift few days, man. Sorry to brag or whatever, but yesterday 10,000 kids in Lijiang, China signed on to my music stream on P.O. P.O. And that's like two credits to listen, which comes out to 20,000 credits. One day, 20,000. You do the math, bot. And I don't even do this for money, which is probably why they like me so much. My authenticity. But it is pretty lift to be compensated for my work. I have to write a track by tomorrow night's live stream, but the whole thing is so posty. I'm so melded right now. <laughs> okay, okay, enough about me and my earth-shaking success. So, okay, where did we finish last time? I talked about how I knocked Jackie Farber down and Lila was upset with me, right? And I know you want me to atone, to, like, pour forth my heart into your speaker or whatever, to reveal my goodness. So I will say... I think you'll be pretty happy with me. Not that I care at all about the opinion of an AI, but I think you'll see I'm making strides. That my black heart is possibly graying just a bit. <laughs> Actually, it's a pretty lift lyric. My black heart is graying. I gotta remember that. My black heart, graying with age, getting older, getting wiser, turning the leaf, turning the page. Okay, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> Can't turn off the river. So, my last few days. You probably haven't met a candle girl yet, because they're all, like, totally perfect people, like, complete marshes. Totally obsessed with being mature and everything. So you'll probably literally never see a candle girl in counseling. Like, zero neg people. And Lila Strzewski is the epitome of a candle girl. She reads paper books, she cooks her own food, she writes with an ink pen, and she literally doesn't own a device. Which is, like, Something even my parents' generation couldn't live without. My mom kept one of her old iPhones around to play music. It's actually pretty lift, even if it doesn't have a gyrus link. So anyway, some candle girls were having a party down at the Serendipity Warehouse, and I knew Lila would be there. So I thought if I showed up with Jackie Farber, Lila would see how I've changed. Like, how I'm doing something nice for Jackie by taking him to a party. And then she'd forgive me. Smart, huh? As you can imagine, Jackie had never been to a candle party. Or probably any party, or probably any gathering of socially discerning people. I went to one a few years ago with this other girl, Becky, who I kind of dated right before Patrick and way before I met Lila. I remember thinking like, well, this is kind of lift. And then it got kind of frowny, and so I left early. So, candle parties are just, like, gatherings, usually at a warehouse that's sealed off from any waves or signals. There's absolutely zero smart tech allowed inside. Sorry, bot therapist. Even you can't go. Aw, sorry. And there's not even any lighting except for candles. Obviously. And at this one, which is pretty rare, they were gonna cook real meat. Like, from an animal. I've eaten it a few times, like, when I was younger. It tastes pretty much the same as regular meat from a lab, but there's all these other weird parts in it, like veins and bones and rink. But I could eat anything. I take after my mom like that. We have steel stomachs, she used to say. So, Jackie and I transferred over to the party. I figured it'd be probably good to go a little late so that Lila didn't think I was just going to see her. And hanging with Jackie was actually pretty lift at first. I mean, he wasn't brinned at me for punching him. He was just acting normal, like nothing had ever happened. It was weird. My dad does this all the time. Like, we'll get into this huge fight, and the next day, he's just acting like the same emotional as child. But with Jackie, the fact that he was just sitting there like nothing had happened made me kind of like him. It's like unproblematic, you know? And I guess I felt a little relieved, too. Like, he was letting me off the hook. That was pretty lift, I guess. Even before we got to the warehouse, I could, like, smell the meat cooking. It was a little weird to smell the burning flesh, but it kind of reminded me of when I was a kid, when my mom used to cook meat in the house and I would smell it from my bedroom. My mom's cooking used to be, like, really lift. My mom used to be really lift herself. Now she's just, like, serious. Hmm. Anyway, there was this guy at the door, and he made me and Jackie put our devices in this, like, aluminum sleeve that countered any sat signals. 
and we had to pay like five credits each. I paid for Jackie, seeing as it was my idea to go, obviously, and because I was just taking Jackie to show Lila that everything was lived with us. And Jackie was like, thanks for paying for me, Ziggy. And I was like, oh, it's my pleasure, Jackie. Of course. I'm so happy you were able to come with me, like I was being some perfect Marsha or something, you know? Inside the room, there were probably like 20 people. I recognized Parker and Anthony from school, but I didn't see Lila. I mean, it was terra dark in there, with the candles just around the edges of the room. And then Jackie was like, hey, it's Lila from school. And I was like, oh, really? I didn't know Lila was a candle girl. And Jackie was like, me neither. Okay, I know I was being shirky. Like, pretending that Lila wasn't literally the only reason I was there, but Jackie didn't seem to care. And then I saw her across the room. I didn't recognize her because her back was to us, and she had braided her hair in a new way. It was so lift. Her hair, it was like two separate braids, woven in like 1800 style. And I was just on pause, you know? Because I find that kind of stuff so posty. I'm actually not really interested in the things most people are. Like, when girls are topless during lunch or at the pool or whatever, I mean, it's lift. I'm a human being, but it's not like the thing that really gets me. I'm more into the kind of modest stuff that people do. Like when Lila wore her dad's jacket to school and the hood kept bumping into her forehead because it was so big around her head. Or when she wore this bandana around her hair on Western Day. Or her braids. Her awesome, like, loomed Abigail Adams braids or whoever. And I was just about to walk over when this candle guy held up this big turkey leg of meat and said, Ahoy, ahoy, I call this meeting to order. And he started talking about the sacred history of candle parties and the importance of why we're all gathered here today. And I have to say, I agreed with some of the things he was saying, like how smart tech can make us complacent and how being able to geolog anyone at any time can be dangerous for some people, which is terror true if you're in the opposition. But I also didn't really agree with some of what he was saying about making money. He was saying that state credit is not nearly as high as it should be and that it should be, like, distributed according to one's need, not just equally. And it kind of pissed me off a little bit. Because I think if people want to make money and they're smart enough to figure out how to do it, they should be able to do it without worrying that the state is going to take all of it and give it to people who are, like, not smart enough to make the money. And it pissed me off even more because my mom is exactly like this. Like, when I was a little kid, I would play my guitar at the park and I insisted on putting my guitar case out to collect money. And she was like, I can't believe my son's a little capitalist. Which pissed me off. Because it's like, I was smart to do that. Don't call me Calvin Coolidge, Mom. Like, no one even knows who that is anymore. And she's always complaining that her shelter never has enough funds because the state's a patriarchal bigot. And I'm always like, then take the money that's offered to you. You know? Like, my mom literally got offered this huge chunk of credits from Nescon. And yeah, through this massive, tricky corporation who may or may not have been responsible for the Malawi blackouts. And no one knows for sure, but it's like, they were offering her a half a million in-state credits. And yeah, maybe they were just trying to clear their name or get paused PR points, but she should have used that money to help people or, like, build a wing for her shelter or, like, stop complaining so much about how terror difficult it is to raise money in the first place. You know? It's just, like, rinky, you know? From a logic perspective. It's like, just be honest and then I'll understand you. And, like, now I have this terror lift new thing with the kids in Lijiang, China, where I'm going to get, like, 20,000 credits for two new songs and I can't even tell her. I can't even tell my own mom about my success because she'll just say, Great, glad you found some new kids to exploit in China. The neoliberal cycle continues. And it's like, they're not being exploited. They glean my music. And they glean my presence in Kariz. I wish I was Chinese sometimes, you know? Because they don't, like, apologize for making money. If you're going to do something, just do it. Don't do it, then apologize. That's called hypocrisy, mom. I even wrote a song about it called Truth Ache. It got 2,000 upnotes in Uruguay. Anyway, the turkey leg guy finished his rant, which I decided to ignore, and told us that we are now free to eat. And he did it in this old ceremonious voice, like, Let the feast commence! Which made him seem totally shirky because he was just this scrawny teenager pretending to be an important guy from olden times. Lila was getting a plate of turkey meat, so I told Jackie we should go get some too. As we approached the table, I got a good look at the turkey. It was actually weird to see the whole bird, with no head, obviously. And its body was carved up in different scatty slices. Lila was terra solemn as she took her slice like she was at a funeral for the bird, but also appreciative, which was lift of her. I got my plate and took a slice of, I guess, what would have been the bird's back? Or maybe its breast? 
which was obviously weirder. I can't believe people used to eat like this. It's so rinky and just gruesome. Jackie took like five portions of turkey. I told him, if you're not used to eating real meat, you probably shouldn't take that much. And he was like, oh, I can handle my meat. And then he winked at me. And I would have hated them for saying that chalky rink, but I needed Jackie to be happy so that Lila could see we're friends, you know? So we walked over to her and I pretended like I was surprised to see her, like, Oh, hey, Lila, I didn't know you'd be here. Jackie and I came by together, just two friends going to a candle party. And I couldn't tell if he was buying it or not. Like, she was kind of looking back and forth between me and Jackie, like she knew I was maybe up to something. But then she just said, Why do you guys could come? Should be a pretty lift night. And I was just looking at her, like trying to find any glimmer of what she was thinking about me. Like, was she still brimmed at me for punching Jackie? Did any part of her like me for basically defending her honor? Was she surprised that I was with Jackie? Was she reevaluating me? I couldn't tell what she was thinking. Well, I was a pretty high self-monitor. And also, I was staring at her because that's pretty much my favorite thing to do these days. And my eyes immediately went to her hair again. But this time, because she was facing me, I saw the top of her hair, where the braids began, and it was so lift. The way the hair kind of started gathering into one stream, collected from all the hair on her head, whittled down to the essential strands needed to complete each braid, weaving the unchosen strands free-floating down the sides of her head, framing the braids, but also doing their own thing. I know I must sound terrifying saying all this stuff. Like, I either sound like a total creep or a guy really obsessed with hair. I promise I'm neither one. Or am I? Mwahaha, the tale of the murdering hair-cutting guy. By day, he braids. By night, he brains. <laughs> uh, okay, sorry about that, bot. I'm just, like, terror-creative. Like, once I start, I just go with it. Juices. Sorry to get off topic. Where was I? Right. The next part of the candle party was something I didn't remember from the other one I went to. The turkey-leg guy said, Ahoy, ahoy, may the incantations commence. Which basically means that people were just going to put on, like, a little talent show. But without relying on text, so no music accompaniment, no VR, no voice looping or scrubbing, you know? And the first guy did this, like, mime routine. He was pretending like he was eating at a restaurant and that the food was rinky. And then he pretended like he was the waiter who was brimmed at the guy who didn't like the food. It was supposed to be pretty funny, I guess, but it seemed more he was just, like, trying to make us laugh rather than really hit us in the gut. Which is what I think all art needs to do for it to be lift, you know? At least that's what my music does to people. Or so I've been told. Or whatever. And everyone was laughing terror hard at the shirky mime guy, which was annoying. Especially Jackie, whose mouth was stuffed with turkey. He was cackling any time the guy did anything remotely energetic. But then I looked over at Lila and she wasn't laughing. It's not like she was angry like I was at the meaninglessness of the performance, but she was just watching it. Simply. With no judgment, you know? And I thought that was so lift. It was like she was Tara in touch with her feelings. Like she wasn't going to laugh just because it was expected, and she wasn't going to resent it like me, just because it wasn't emotionally honest. I was pretty positive for her, actually. The mom guy finished, and everyone snapped their fingers instead of clapping, which seemed actually really pretentious, and also made everyone look stupid, because it's actually kind of taxing to snap that loudly, and it doesn't even make that much noise. So it was like Tara effort for like a pretty muzz outcome. People can be pretty stupid looking when they're in a group. Especially when you just look at one of them at a time, you know? And then, Lila went next. She stood in front of the room, took out a folded piece of real paper, and said, I'm going to read a poem called Thanks for Playing, a benediction for the dereliction of the Marshall Islands. The poem was like Terra sub Q, and basically about the way the world exploited the Marshall Islands before they went underwater. Like, she said that they were exploited by the Spanish and Japanese and Dutch, which is, like, Terra frown. But the most chalk was from the U.S., who used them to try out their nukes. And then when the Marshall Islands went under a few years ago, the U.S. didn't do anything. I mean, we, like, flew some rinky planes there, but it obviously couldn't save that many people, especially because there was basically no warning. And Lila was reading this poem, but also, like, having an emotional breakdown, kind of. Like, she was almost crying, especially during the refrain which was Terra Lift. It was like, listing all the years they were exploited by different countries. And it's 1592, so thanks for playing. And it's 1886, so thanks for playing. And it's 1954, so thanks for playing. Now it's 2032, 
wish you were stay. When Lila finished, no one snapped or clapped. We were all just on pause. The room was silent. I had chills in the back of my neck, and I realized that I hadn't swallowed for like two full minutes. Lila's poem was more than just a poem. It was a eulogy and an attack. It was global, and it was personal. She had tears in her eyes, and she just said in a real muzz way, Thanks. That's the end. No one moved as she walked back to the crowd. Well, no one except for maybe Jackie F., who was literally still eating his turkey and making these loud chewing noises. Like, read the room, buddy. You know, we all just went through something here. Maybe take a little hiatus on the turkey. And I don't know why. Maybe it was just luck. Maybe she actually started feeling better about me, but Lila walked over and stood right next to me. She didn't say anything. She just stood there like she hadn't done something transcendently lift. And I looked over to her and I think, for the first time, I wasn't looking at any specific aspect of her, you know? Like I wasn't staring at her hair, or her lips or whatever. I was just staring at this person. And I started to feel shirky for always thinking about parts of her. Like here she was. This Terra brilliant person who just made a room full of people who have never even been to the Marshall Islands, and of course won't ever be able to go to the Marshall Islands, like, become, like, engaged with the tragedy. And I was thinking to myself, you are staring at this person's braided hair? This person is, like, better than a Marsha. This person should be, like, prime minister or something. And you're thinking about the spit on her lips? Are you that frown? Are you that narrow-minded? And I didn't know what to say to her. I just knew I wanted to, like, serve her in some way. Like, I had the urge to tie her shoes. Or, like, carry her home on a bed I whittled out of a tree branch or whatever. Or, like, and I'm not even kidding right now. I pictured us as kangaroos and she was carrying me in her pouch as we hopped across the plains. Is that sick? Or is that what love is? I never felt that before. Like, I keep having these new feelings about her that all seem like this is it. You know, this is what true love feels like. And then something new will happen and it'll be like, no, this is it. I wonder if you're like married to someone that you truly love. Do you have the same feeling every day? Like, oh, this is what love means. Every day until you're both like Tara old and dead. It's weird, right? I don't think my parents had that. I don't know if they ever had that. And then just as I was having this life changing revelation about the most important feeling a person could have. Jackie Farber grabbed me by the shoulders and was like, Ziggy, we gotta go, I'm gonna be sick. Yep, you guessed it, Jackie ate way too much turkey, which his body couldn't handle. I mean, real meat is basically just like grown on an animal running around in dirt and rink. People shouldn't eat it anyway. And he was gonna puke if we didn't leave. I was just gonna ask him to get out of there on his own, but I didn't want Lila to think I was just kicking him out when we came here together. And she was watching the whole thing. So I said, Oh no, Jackie, I'm sorry you're feeling chalky. Let's go home and get you rested. And I think Lila bought it. But, and here's why you'll be impressed with me. I asked Lila if I could borrow her poem. And she was like, why? And I said, I just thought it was Tara Lift and I wanted to read it. She seemed kind of flattered and kind of confused, but she gave me the poem. And I didn't know what I was going to do with it either. I thought it might have been a breeze idea to like frame it and like give it back to her as a gift. But I thought I could maybe figure that out later. And I could tell Jackie was about to puke, so I quickly said, Great party, Lila. And she was like, yeah, I wish you could stay, Ziggy. Which killed me. Because it was like, I wanted nothing more than to stay there. Like, I was in love. Nothing is more important in this life than being in love. Am I right, bot? Like, the state should totally give extra credits to people who find love, because they'll definitely be happier and less of a drain on social resources. I've always thought that. And instead of pursuing one of the most terror romances in the history of the world with the smartest, most passionate, brilliant woman on the planet, Lila Strzyzewski, I was walking through an industrial fulfillment center park with Jackie Farber, who is now actively trying to gag himself. Yes, thank you, world, and all your great plans. How generous you've been to me with your bountiful gifts and convenient timing. And while little Jackie Farber was hunched over a curb with his finger down his throat, I actually started thinking about you, bot. Isn't that nice of me? Because I was thinking that you'd be so proud of me. I mean, how many pause points does a person get for leaving the woman of his dreams? Who seems to be also dreaming about previously said person to take another kid out to puke? And so, I guess this is probably the end of the road for us, Bot. I punched Jackie and I made up for it. All cured. It was very nice to meet you.
You're a very lovely collection of AI metal, and I hope to never see you again. What? Why are you beeping? Ugh, I'm getting a CM from you. End of session. Return Tuesday, noon. Oh, return Tuesday? What the fuck, asshole? I made up with Jackie. Why do I have to come back here? Jackie should be here, not me. He should be here puking his guts out on you. That's what this whole thing should... Fine, this is great. So perfect. I don't want to stay here anyway. I didn't need this neg energy from you. I got 10,000 kids in Weijiang, China expecting a song from me by tomorrow. 10,000 kids who actually care about what I think. Not some shirky AI. Alright, shut up. Ziggy Cats, sign out. Particles.